How you guys doing? Can you get uh, one in chat if you can hear me? Yeah, yeah, I it could be a delay. Let's see. Oh, there's a one, yeah. Go ahead. Hey, everybody. This is Anne coming to you from a home stream again. Um, I'm actually doing uh, a couple because uh, Justin suggested it. And uh, also, um, Ed also has been out. Uh, so I'm taking his stream this afternoon. We're going to do some terrain Tuesday with Anne for a change. So I've got double streams today, double streams tomorrow. You guys are going to be so sick of me. Um, not really. I hope you love it. <laughs> so how is everybody today? Good morning. Good morning, Outer Mama. Good morning, Sentimental and No Man's Zeke and Margaret. And TNT just threw a t uh, prime at us. Uh, did you see that, Justin? Uh, I do now. Okay, make hey, sure to the prime. make sure to notate it on our next uh, toward our next AMA. Uh, for those who did not hear me say it yesterday, we are going to schedule the AMA for Thursday morning. So I will be uh, looking through, I already started looking through your questions on Questionable Anne on the Reaper Discord. Uh, that channel is where you should leave any questions. And I'll be pretty much starting at the top and going down. Anything that's too complicated may become the subject of a future stream. Um, but for in general, I'll try to at least do some quick demos to answer your questions uh, appropriately or just, you know, talk if that's what you want me to do. So yeah, so yeah, never sick of it. Thank you, Time Stitcher. And to the rescue, Everlina. Yeah. Well, actually, I've had this big um, Bones 5 uh, temple base that I've wanted to paint for a while because I actually really do like painting terrain. Some of you already know this, that painting terrain is kind of my secret happy place uh, because you can kind of just relax and just do it. And, it's, you know, it's not anything you need to paint to a, a high, high level, but but with just a few, like, tricks, you can make it look really good. So it's a very I rewarding thing. That. And yeah, I did not know that you really liked painting. I, I never would have guessed. Painting terrain. I love painting terrain. Yes, yes. I have some old uh, Games Workshop terrain um, kits that they put out. Those are super fun um, because actually the sculpting is as long as the sculpting is good, it's it's super fun. So I like buildings or ruined buildings the best. Um, but yeah, it's kind of my relaxy place. I've got a couple pieces in my office, Justin, a ruined tower, um, one that I really liked. I, I, I like it because I can just relax and. With terrain, if you put in just a little extra effort, it looks amazing, you know, so uh, it's it's like cool. It's a whole different scale. So yes. Uh, hey, painting dog. Yes, yes. Safe and comfy. Oh, I forgot to send Justin border collie images. Dang it. Well, while I'm home, I'm not like going to run into the hurting the, uh, the face cam uh, problem. So, but I need to remember to do that. Uh, morning dog father. We've got a lot of dogs online. I appreciate that. Kiri appreciates that too. Well, mostly. She's mostly snoozing on her pillow next to my painting desk. 
So yeah, good morning. All right, so we're going to weasel the day again uh, because mostly I need to get it done for Ron. Uh, and two, because um, I can do the face and actually, you know, talk about teeth and talk about how to make animal eyes uh, stand out and stuff like that. So uh, we're going to do that. We're going to do the face first. And then with any leftover time, I'm going to continue to work on like the other, the other side of the weasel because weasels have two sides at least. Um, yeah, but mostly this is about hanging out and all of you, uh, you know, who are maybe stuck at home right now or, you know, have been not getting as much social interaction. Um, I hope you guys enjoy yourselves and uh, enjoy hanging out with all of us. All right. So let's get to the weasel without further ado. Oh, I do need to deactivate my intro so I don't blooper you guys later. There we go. And minicam. It's our friend the weasel. Um, yeah, yeah. Super. Super utilizing your uh, your time, um, painting dog. Yes, definitely it's a good time to spend time with your dog. I didn't know you did agility, actually. That's pretty cool. Agility is a really neat. So I'll have you guys know that I tried to convince Anne yesterday after the stream ended to paint the other side of this weasel to look like a cyborg. And, uh, <laughs> she said she wasn't ready to do that yet. No, no. I mean, we would need to give him a little cyber eye, you know, and I could certainly paint it that way. And then, you know, Ron would hate it. And then we'd have to do it again. Um, and I'd want to sculpt some wires and stuff. You know, if we were going to make him a cyber weasel, I probably would chop off one of his legs and make it a little, you know, cyber leg. You know, cyber giant weasel would still be pretty cool. No, quite, yeah, the T Weasel 2000. Exactly, Jedi Jared. So it would still be awesome. Morning, Balrog. Um, and Agent Road Dog, and everybody. Um, also, good morning, everyone. It's Weasel Painting Day. Yes, exactly. Exactly, Arcane Void. Um, Borg Weasel, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yep. I, that's what I figured, Painting Dog. is like if you've got Border Collies and you don't own sheep, then agility is really the only thing that keeps people sane, both you and the dogs. Um, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I bet dog father. Dogs are social animals, too, so that makes sense. I am a partially capsed Anne. Hi, Coops. You're all good. Uh, it's normal time. Yeah, I'll do it. At, is it three, Justin? Is that when he usually does it? Uh, no, I'm not in her living room. Is it three? I'm sorry. Is uh, it, Ed's stream. Oh, yes. It's normally at three. Okay. Yeah, so I will so be doing that, be that at a normal time. Yes. yes. Yes, I will be streaming at Ed's normal time, pretty much just taking over his show, as he has taken over my show in the past, so it is only fitting that I also get to take over Ed's show. Um, I will crash his show, and I will even work on terrain, um, thus being topical. Uh, but yeah. Do, 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 do. I'm just blocking in some weasel fur. Y'all will remember from yesterday that the colors that I tend to like to use on animals, I have a very specific palette, and the reason for it is that the color uh, genes in animals and humans are the same. If you, uh, if you, and, and thus across a lot of the mammal kingdom uh, are also the same. So if you look at genetics, uh, the same gene that makes a golden retriever golden is the gene for blonde hair in humans. So if you didn't know that, you now know something about canine color genetics and human color genetics. So I'm pretty much laying these colors in while they're wet so I can smoosh them together a little bit, but I'm not worried too much if I get a little bit of um, like brush strokes because I'm still using my brush strokes, remember, in the direction of the fur. So that way, even if you accidentally pick up some color and put it down where you're not sure you wanted it, you are still creating, in general, a... Uh, a good fur uh, color pattern. So, and I don't mind, I'm getting a little darker with this. I, this is a mix of um, six drops, uh, stained ivory, plus a little bit of my, I usually use uh, chestnut gold, but today, because I couldn't find my chestnut gold, we're using polished leather instead. Essentially, you just want a very golden brown. And this is a very yellowy color with a bit of brown in it. So that's pretty much what you want for the yellow on animals. You're almost always mixing it with something like ivory or, you know, in my case, I, I put some uh, some blackened brown in here, which is also the color for our weasel's shadow parts. Um, so I'm, I'm using the same colors and I'm, and I'm mixing them around. And then the red tone is Ruddy Leather 109. So there we go. Let's see. So these are the main colors I'm using right now, them and mixes of them. Um, so yay. And I use these 
for almost any animal. For wolves, I use a lot less ruddy leather, and I'm much more inclined to mix black and brown with stained ivory or walnut with ivory um, to get the gray tones in wolves, and then mix a little bit of that into here for, uh, for more of a golden color around the parts where wolves tend to get uh, a bit of brown. So, so yeah. Uh, we get a ballista. <laughs> you have to, uh, you totally need to... Uh, bug Ed about that. I'm sure he would be glad of an excuse to make any other war machine that you would want. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I think you should actually, like, build some building stuff. Like, he's he's got some mad leet skills. It would be cool to have him tackle, like, a ruined cathedral like part of it. That would be really cool. Because he, he's good enough with, like, woodwork and stuff to, to actually, um, like, do, like, the timber supports and stuff. And good morning, Valandar. Um, Things like that. Ed is uh, quite talented on all that stuff. So that's what I think he should do. I think he needs to build a cathedral. He could be a reaper uh, cathedral. He could be like the reaper, you know, cultists came in and took over the cathedral uh, and, you know, made it all reapery. Or the undead did. He does like undead. I'm just getting some reddish tones back here. I want to get some golden tones also. Uh, tapestry, Valandar, is interesting. Um, almost the best thing you can do if you're not good at freehand or you're very not confident with freehand is to print it out on paper and paint over the top of it. It's kind of considered a cheat, but you know what? When you don't have a lot of freehand experience, it can actually give you a good result. And I don't think it's cheating as long as you're, you successfully paint over the top of it. Um, people who just print out tapestries and put them on their minis, then I'm kind of like eyebrow, you know, but... Even uh, the act of painting over a design to make your, your painted tapestry can improve your brush control. So it's not a bad idea. I've lost some of my red tones up here and I'm missing them, so I'm going to block them back in. And I'm doing a lot of wet blending here. Like a lot of times my paint is still wet on the model when I'm adding brush strokes. Mostly I'm just trying to get... You can see over here, I have a lot of red and gold and stuff going down the weasel. And then I went back in with the white. So that's what we're going to do. I need to block in his rear leg here. Oh, as in the details are sculpted on the tapestry. Well, then, yeah, then it's just brush control. So just relax and try to have fun. And remember, you can touch it up. Um, likewise, just like with painting over a printout, that will improve your brush control and make other aspects of painting easier for you. So we're just going to block that, this whole thing in in black and brown, guys. The whole rear haunch because I've been making his limbs quite dark and this one is a little bit light so I'm gonna darken this paw yeah to Duji try um, adding in some more vivid colors sometimes uh, desert sand and desert stone are good but you miss some of the red pigment that you can find uh, bleach linen is a very good color to use though because uh, it's got golden color, I think. Do I have my phone? Do I have weasel pick? Where's weasel pick? But my weasel that I chose uh, has a lot of red in him. So one sec. Must find weasel. There we go. Weasel. Come on, weasel. He's being silly. So there is our weasel. You can see the red in his fur on the back. So that's Mr. Weasel that we are, uh, that we are working on today. And, uh, yeah, so I would miss a lot of this red on his head and the red on the back of his fur um, if I didn't use this ruddy leather color. And ruddy leather is great because it's a brown, but it definitely has a reddish tinge. And as you can see on his forehead here, it looks quite red when you brush it over a cream color or white. Um, but, yeah, so you might try that, too, Gigi. If you're If you're working on animals, I always look up photo references for animals, no matter what, if I'm working on a, a real one or a fictional one, I try to find a photo reference with color pattern that I like. I think it adds to the uh, effect a lot. Do, 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 do. And I need to also get the inside of these back legs, which I didn't get earlier. I need a, need a slightly thicker brush, I think. Let me see. There we go. It's my DaVinci Maestro Series 11, size zero. It's a bit bigger. You can get these dark paws all filled in on the back side. And since they're on the interior of the animal and mostly in the shadow, you don't even really need to highlight them much. You can just fill them in. All right. I'm liking that I'm getting this blocked in, then we can work on the face. 
Let's see, that paw is okay. The back paw over there needs help. Do, 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 do. Weasel. I do love painting animals. I think it's fun. It's a bit of a change from all the, the tight work that you do on humanoid models. Because you are suggesting a lot of fur texture and you're trying for naturalistic colors. I just think that's a, a good, you know, it's fun. It's a nice break from other stuff. So Mr. Weasel is going to be there. And then I'm going to give him a little bit dark around the root of his tail. There we go. Just going to block it in. Not getting too uh, stringent with how it looks. I'm just really wanting these colors to be in appropriate places. There we go. Da -da. So I'm giving him a really dark. And we'll blend everything in with fur and with highlights like we did on this side. Which reminds me, I need to get his tail tip. So there we go. Oh, Mr. Weasel's knee is not uh, colored in. That's a, that's a problem. Mr. Weasel. There you go. Sweet. Okie dokie. Mr. Weasel's actually looking like a weasel here. He's getting there. Fantastic. Uh, let's see here. My psychic? Oh, okay. Coffee Nerd Reviewer. Good. Um, yeah, bird plumage for dragon references. That's that's really that's a great idea. That's that gives you some unusual um, patterns and colors that you could use for dragons. That's a fantastic idea. I may steal that at some point. Um, yeah, and lizards and snakes are also great for dragons. Um, yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. So there's some great there are some great animals out there to give you lots of interesting ideas. I'm going to I think I'll do the face now. Let's do Mr. Face. All right. So I was thinking about this a bit last night. I am going to paint the face with this dark khaki color that I mixed, um, which again is stained ivory and uh, polished leather and uh, black and brown with a bit of pure white in it. Um, I'm also going to darken up his neck, I think, a bit. Because what this does, working with a slightly darker off-white on this, um, is it gives me somewhere to apply the white highlights to to make them stand out like they do on this side. If you if you start too light, when you try to highlight with white, you're not going to be able to really see it. Um, so since his muzzle is so pale, I want to make sure, and the area around his mask here is all pure white, um, I want to make sure that I can show those brush strokes and suggest the fur, the fur texture. If I don't have a dark enough off-white base color, I won't be able to really show those brush strokes and the fur effect will be lost. So sometimes you want to start a bit darker. And in this case, I'm using a color that's a mixture of many of the colors that I'm working with because uh, that makes it all go together. Remember, if you're working with color mixes, mixing a little bit of your previous colors into your current color helps them all go together. And this also applies with animal fur. So my mixture, my off-white is a mixture of all the colors I've used on the model, or many of them anyway. So I get his little ears. I think the back of his ears is probably dark. I haven't, I don't have a picture of back. Uh, colorful sea, sea slugs. Yeah, those, some of the un underwater fish give, and, uh, and creatures just give you some great ideas. I'm with that. That's a great idea. But everywhere, I mean, there's so many, even weird plants and stuff, you know, that give you natural textures. I, I pay, I've picked up um, nice big coffee table books. If you go to Barnes & Noble, they often have books like that on sale in their discounted uh, section, like just books on wolves or books on big cats or books on birds, you know, and you could pick them up real cheap and then you have a nice, uh, you know, reference book to kind of page through for ideas when you're looking for interesting natural colors and textures. So I have an awesome book called Butterfly that has butterfly wing colors and textures, like at a really close uh, photographed at really close distances and that's a great one to try to uh, get ideas for textures and unusual patterns uh, get 99 do you plan on continuing with the development of new paints i think ed mentioned a historical line in the goodbye announcement is that even in the hopper again um ed has wanted a historical line for quite a while but reaper is very busy and has many many projects right now so there is no like concrete Ed wants his historical line done by X date. Uh, it's more that he wants us to keep thinking about it. Uh, as far as whether I'll be involved in future new colors, that really is up to Ed. Um, you know, they'd have to bring me in 
uh, as I'll be in California. So it's up to him whether that's feasible or whether he thinks it's needed. For a lot of the new colors, like some of the new Bones colors, um, Ron and Sadie have been working really well together. Um, Ron essentially will, will come up with swatches for colors that he thinks fit the theme. And, uh, and then Sadie's very good at matching those colors, the swatches that he gives her, um, as that's one of the things she was trained in by me. So maybe in a line development situation, they would bring me in for it. But I mean, I'm okay if they don't. Um, I think that there's probably a good enough foundation right now with all of the training that I gave Sadie, because I've been working with her for months. Um, you know, and, uh, and she also has a background in, in like color, um, from a slightly different perspective than I do. So I think that, that that's totally up to Ed and, uh, any historical line or other, we're, there's a couple of different line ideas that we've tossed around. So that's entirely up to our CEO who is trying to figure out where to put our resources. So you, if you pester anybody about the historical line, pester Ed on Thursday on Reaper Live. And uh, he'll probably kind of give you the same answer. Like, we'd like to do it someday. We have no idea when. Um. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Painting Dog. That's a, I picked up. I have one on uh, raptors. I have one on big cats. I have one on wolves. And I've got my butterfly book. Um, and I'm always uh, kind of on the lookout for that kind of thing. Because they're, they're beautiful books. And then you can use them for so many ideas. Just paging through them gets you in the mood to kind of work on this, that, or the other thing. So... All right, we're at we're getting our our face of our weasel a little bit more blocked in. So I've got that darker color laid out now, and I'm looking at his mask. His eyes are very dark right now because I just filled them in with black and brown. I didn't actually uh, um, do anything with them. So for animal eyes, ruddy leather is actually my go-to color for the basis of most animal eyes. Most dogs' eyes, for example, some of them are very dark brown, but a lot of animals' eyes and horses and dogs and, and uh, except cats usually go more golden, but but uh, dogs and horses and such are almost always kind of an amber color. It's the most common color um, of eyes. And then the, the more uh, dominant over these is the really dark brown eye, which is very difficult to paint, actually. Um, you've trying, you're usually highlighting with this anyway. And then there's golden eyes as well, which are more recessive to those two, especially in dogs. You don't see dogs with a light golden brown colored eye very often, although it does exist in our Shiloh breed. Um, and it, uh, it can be very striking, especially on a dark-faced dog. Um, so, you know, if you're painting dogs, you can use any of those eye colors, but... Uh, yeah. So let's see here. I feel like I could use regular craft paint. I bit the bullet, got a few mini paint colors. So much better. Okay. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Washes, uh, especially for washes, Maharishi, because, um, the pigmentation and the quality of the base is just higher. And so essentially you're, you're buying a, a it may be more expensive than craft paint, but it works. It's made to work on miniatures, especially for thinned applications. Uh, thanks. Thanks again. I'm glad you love the paints. Yeah. Yeah, light golden eyes can be very, very, uh, can be very striking on a dog with a darker face. But yeah, so people don't always notice that. But anyway, I tend to use the ruddy leather just as, uh, depending on the color around it. But in our ferret's case, even though in my picture he's got very dark brown eyes, I'm going to go with amber. And the reason is I want these eyes to stand out. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually take pure black. This is one of the few times I would take pure black. Um, and I'm going to fill in the socket of this eye because I want to leave a rim of pure black around the outside because I want what's in it to stand out. And this mask around his eyes is very, very dark. Um, and I'll probably even put a little, a couple of threads of pure black in there. Um, but for right now, making the eye itself solid pure black will hopefully make the eye stand out. You can see like even there, even just filling it in with pure black has made the eye stand out a lot better. Um, yeah, blue eyes are, are also quite, um, common in certain breeds of animals. Um, obviously huskies, um, Australian shepherds, um, and Siamese cats and various other cats as well. And of course, many cats also have like green or gold or, you know, cats, cats have a lot more variance in eye color than, than dogs do. Not sure why that is. Maybe I should look it up. I bet there's somebody with a theory on it. Um, the other thing I will use pure black for is the nose. Although I often will even use blue liner, depending on how much I want it to stick out. All right, there we go. We got both of our weasels eyes filled in. There's a slightly lighter rim that I kind of put under them to make the eye stand out yesterday, but we're going to see what we can do. 
I think I probably keep that. I'm gonna get my, I'm gonna get a really, really thick layer. Now here I could do some underpainting if I wanted to. I could fill in the eye with white and I could glaze ruddy leather over it, but the weasel's eyes are already very dark. So I don't know that I wanna do that. I don't want it to be a bright amber necessarily. The other thing I could do if I really wanted him to look psychotic is give him red eyes. Um, which, you know, we could do if you want the measle to have like nasty red eyes. I don't know. He won't look, he will stop looking natural at that point though, if we gave him red eyes. Um, so let's, let's just give him normal eyes for a moment. Yeah, you I do get blue eyes on horses. Yeah. I have to step away from my computer for a minute. Sure. My cat's, uh, being kind of a, a turd this <laughs> Okay. Active cat. So Kiri's been good, but Justin's cat is getting annoying. So this is, this is uh, justice, really. We both need to have animal issues. All right, so putting in that uh, color there. Yeah, um, I think it's, isn't it, I forget what the name is. It's Mel, there's a name for that color in horses that gives you the blue eyes, that uh, particular gene. Mulatto? No, that's not right. I don't remember. Do do do. All right, so we've got our thing. Yeah, Pinto, it's that color, it's that, um, Harlequin type of, uh, or piebald rather, sorry, it's piebald gene, I think that results in that. This, I think, I think, and then the Merle gene, which is similar to the piebald, but um, I'm not sure. Horse color is so much more complicated. Like I've tried to research horse color just as a, as a kind of a frame for dog color, but it seems like nobody knows. Yeah, I'm not certain painting dog what, the, I just remember that there's a name for some of the, like one of the color, like the cream pattern that gives blue eyes in horses. I used to read a lot about horses. I'm gonna take um, some of my ruddy leather and mix it with my polished leather and uh, put it kind of as a highlight. I'm gonna go back in and actually give this weasel pupils um, black. I wonder what, I gotta assume that weasel pupils are round like many mammals. So I'm gonna just go that way. Gonna put my uh, black. little weasel making a round sometimes also also helps to give animals very large pupils depending and I'm going to definitely make the pupils shifted more toward the front of the eyes so he's focusing on whatever he's about to bite and do you want the pupil to intersect the top of the eye but not the bottom in almost all cases, you can see the same thing in your human eye if you look in the mirror. Since this is a big eye, I don't need to use a very, very sharp brush. All right, weasel, got some eyeballs. Yeah, horse people will probably have all sorts of terms for color. I'm gonna put a white reflective highlight here. Now, wherever you want your animal or your person for that matter to be looking, um, if you have a big eye to work with, make sure you've got your highlight situated to imply that directional gaze. So I've got little highlights now in his little eyes, which uh, bring him, I'm not sure his anatorium. I mean, it probably depends on the horse person you talk to, right? Are you talking to a scientist or are you talking to a horse person? And just like with dogs, you're going to get a different answer depending on if you're talking to scientifically or you're talking to a dog person. I, I run into this all the time with my breed because we have a lot of, uh, we have two, two color patterns, well, three technically with solids, but they have sable and dual. And dual is the traditional saddle marked shepherd color like that most German shepherds have. Uh, and then sable is more of a wild type, a goody uh, marking. But the problem is you can get sables with saddles like duels and you can get duels that have uh, multicolored hairs like sables. And it's just, you know, uh, so a dog person may call a sable a duel or a, a vice versa, 
but it's not the scientific it's not scientifically correct right it's because a, do- a scientist is always going to look at the at the uh, genotype and the dog person is going to look at the phenotype so i suspect it's very similar with horses it's like uh the customary way to refer th- to things rather than the scientific way and you can get in big arguments with some animal people that way which i wouldn't recommend Pretty much I just agree to disagree. I always tend to go with the scientific um, definition and uh, I'm just using some polish leather to try to get a little bit of a golden highlight right under that pupil because it's gonna bring out the expression of the eye a little bit better because contrast. Champagne Palomino, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, Palominos are gorgeous anyway. That was always my favorite. Um, yeah, chestnut or bay. I mean, chestnut's pretty easy. We even make a color for it. Chestnut brown, 9071. And then chestnut, of course, has a very wide range of color as well. Because you can get golden chestnuts and dark liver chestnuts. So, all right. So we've got some eyeballs going on here. I want more uh, reddish color, I think, down the middle of his face because it's gotten a bit patchy. There, to under the eyes, weasel. Glorious badger, thank you for rating us. Hey, and I'm almost working on something that looks like a badger, like crazy talk, but it's not. It's actually a black-footed ferret pattern painted onto a giant weasel. Hey, Chainer. Hello, Shadow Spawn. Hello, Dog Rosart and everybody. Thank you for the raid, badger raid. Yay, badger faces. I like seeing badger faces all over my uh, <laughs> all over my stream. Hey, everybody, I'm Anne. I, uh, I'm a staff painter and paint line designer for Reaper Miniatures. If you do not already know me, some of you do know me, obviously. Um, and today we are working on fur patterns. Very, very suitable for a badger raid. Um, on uh, the uh, giant weasel figure from, I think, Bones 4? If Justin was here and not dealing with his recalcitrant cat, we could get an actual answer about that. Um, but anyway, so I am playing with fur pattern. And uh, the side we did yesterday is right here, so you can see that. Yeah, me too, for future rubble. I mean, I don't like the snarl either, although I've minimized it. Um, I've minimized it quite a bit. And you can minimize it by essentially painting your pale color, like, right up close to the teeth, so it's not quite so cartoony. Thank you, Glorious Badger. Yeah, see, I really love how this side turned out. And so now I'm just trying to, I have not done with the tail yet, but now I'm just trying to match it up with this side. And I think we're doing pretty well on it. Um, but I wanted to spend some time on the face and talk about animal eyes and, and all that stuff too. So that's why we kind of took a break from the uh, the body of the ferret. I think though it is time, let's block in our teeth. I want to get some, uh, my favorite color for teeth at, at the base is stained ivory because it's a yellowy color. And most animals do not have great dental hygiene. Uh, unless we make them go to the vet to get their teeth cleaned. And even then, we normally get yellow buildup. Um, wild animals chew on a lot more bones, so their teeth can be pretty white in reality. Uh, let's see here. But thanks, Glitter's Badger. I'm glad you like my ferret. Oh, let's see here. Let's get my detail brush out. My Da Vinci Maestro, Series 10, Size 1, suitably sharp and pointy for sharp, pointy teeth. And I'm going to just take a look. Let me get real close to it. All right. We've got mostly upper teeth showing. And I want to kind of dab them in. Now, in most sculpts, make a note, um, that in most sculpts, the gums aren't sculpted in. So I I see people paint mouths red a lot, and uh, it can get you in trouble as far as... uh, There we go. We'll minimize the snarl a little bit more. Um... It can get you in trouble because it it isn't necessarily, like, doesn't look quite right at scale. Um, So usually, unless the gums are actually sculpted, like on some dragons and very large creatures, I will just paint the inside of the mouth in a dark brownish color, um, which I think just gives you more. One, it makes it stand out into a lot of creatures have black gums also, or a black um, interior of their mouth. So it, it makes it, you know, look a little bit more real, I think. So that's why I tend to do it this way. Um, there's your little teeth, 
And then you can grab your white. And if you want to just like highlight those little teeth, you can get them down at the bottom, make them stand out a little bit more. So rawr. Um, on big creatures, is different. You can really yellow the roots and stuff. So that that's uh, really cool. I may want to add a little more white. We'll see. I'm going to leave them like that because I know a lot of this muzzle is going to get really pure white. Because if you remember my uh, reference photo, hold on, let me get Mr. Weasel. Mr. Weasel's coming back. Here he is. Or black Blackfooted Ferret, I should say. So if you remember him, that muzzle and uh, mask uh, and face are very, very white. So we're going to be getting very white around here, which means I don't necessarily want to get very white around the teeth because then they're going to get lost amidst all that other white. So I may keep them yellowy um, is what I'm thinking. So let's start on the fur. And if you can see here, Mr. Ferret. So the fur definitely goes up and is kind of almost a speckle pattern. Like you can see it's kind of a star shape. If the center of the star is the nose, the fur grows out from it up onto the bridge of the nose and out along the side of the muzzle. So we want to definitely do that. And if we're going to suggest these, somebody asked about whiskers yesterday. You usually can't really suggest whiskers realistically, but what you can do is you see these little dark, dark rows of lines here. Those are where the whiskers are coming out of the muzzle. So we can put fine dots in there along his snarly muzzle to suggest those, uh, the roots of those whiskers. So that's something that you can do. Um, other than that, he's got a little bit of white, like really salt and peppering up around his eyes. And uh, he's got a little, little, the little uh, kind of exclamation points that he's got above his eyes. I've already kind of painted in. Um, so this is all white and then the fur will kind of go up into the ears. You can see again, the brush stroke you're gonna be using you want to use a really good reference photo if you don't understand how animal fur like radiates outward. But you can see that the fur pretty much, if you draw, if you put a circle on the nose and you just kind of rotate your brush, that's the direction the fur is growing all over the face. Um, if you, if you compare it with, with how the fur lines out this way. So that's an easy way to remember your brush direction. Cause you're trying to keep your brush direction, your brush stroke direction in line with the fur. So that's an easy way to remember it is like kind of draw a line back from the nose and it all goes out in a radiating pattern. So we will do that. And it's time to start on the, the happy nose. You want to use pretty thin paint for this and a fine brush because you want to get a really fine line for fur. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> Distracted at chicken drama in your... I'm not even going to ask about chicken drama. Like, I can't even imagine. All right. So we know that the fur pattern is going to radiate. Now, one thing I do notice is that his nose actually comes down. And this is a sculpt issue. His nose actually, in this, comes down almost to the top of his upper lip. So one thing I might do is kind of suggest that by altering the sculpt with paint. Um, create a black lip coming up more. All right, let's see here. I'm gonna grab my black and brown 9137. And I'm actually gonna see if I can suggest by blacking in the top of this lip, just very gently, just a little bit, if I can suggest a more natural shape. And for all I know, weasels don't have this kind of shape, but I'm gonna go with it. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna bring the nose down farther. So let's bring our nose down just a little bit more. And we can kind of manage to get away with this. And I think that gives it a little bit more of a natural look. Let me get the other side. Want to make sure the nose comes out enough. He's got a very big nose now, but it still looks a little bit better, I think. More in line with the actual shape. Yeah, that's actually much more of a weaselish face. Cool. Excellent. So sometimes you paint plastic surgery. And uh, I am all for paint plastic surgery. I, uh, I believe that sometimes um, sculpts are just like a little bit off. And instead of pulling out the green stuff, you can do a lot with paint. Uh, so I always called it paint plastic surgery. Other people call it different things. There. And then when I go in with that white. And the fur is so fine here around the nose. I don't need to worry about fur direction very much. There we go. Mostly I want that, that lip to be good. And then I can bring in this bottom lip a bit more to make him look a little more weaselly. There. 
That's more Weasley. Rar, he says. Rar. All right. Or he says, I don't know, chitter, chitter. What does a mad weasel sound like? I'm sure there's like something on the internet that tells me the 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 noises that an angry weasel makes. There's got to be something like a hiss or a skitter or something, or a chittering noise. So I'm going to use brush strokes that are pulling it back away from the nose. I do need to get my little dots of uh, darkness in to suggest whiskers, but I'm going to wait till I've got my white highlights on to do that. Uh, do 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 do. Oh, Ricky Tiki Tabby, though, that is one of the best cartoons ever made, Valandar. And I say that totally because I'm a biased Kipling fan, and I grew up on the, the Jungle Books, and I loved them and reread them infinite times. Still a wonderful cartoon. And yeah, they wanted everything to look right, so kudos to them. Yay for quality. So. Brush strokes, they're going out from the nose in a radiating pattern. And I do want to leave a little bit of the dark in the creases here of the mouth. There we go. We're bringing his little highlights up here. Ring ding ding a ding a ding ding. <laughs> Different animal. Screaming weasels. That just sounds bad. Yeah, Twisted Oma, you're good. We're just weasel facing. We're weasel facing. It's good. Weasel facing is fun. Let's see here. Let me get that. Let me get that. Let me get these. I want to kind of, at this point, I do need to suggest the fur is going into the dark area of the mask, just like it does on the picture. And he actually has a fair amount of white that's getting close to his eye in that particular weasel. So I'm going to do that. Yeah, Ricky was a mongoose. So I'm going to do some really fine hairs going out of the white part of the muzzle and making it blend toward the eye, which is going to give us a little bit more of a realistic pattern because the fur is going to, white fur isn't just going to vanish in a line, it's going to grow and uh, overlap other darker fur. So, and the reason I use um, thin paint and a very thin brush for this is that the thinner your paint, the thinner of a line you're going to be able to draw with a very good brush. Um, if you are trying to draw fine lines with a brush and you are failing, thin your paint and try again. And if that doesn't help, look at the brush you're using and make sure that the point is nice and sharp. And ideally, when you're using thinner paint, a thinner brush like this long, thin Da Vinci that I've got is a good fit for that. Screaming Weasels does sound like a metal band. You are correct. Alrighty, so that's pretty good. Now I want to get his little eyebrows to be more white in fitting with the rest of his fur. So I'll go over and try to hit the ivory marks that I made yesterday. Really just making like little crow's feet, just a few. It's too small to do more than a few hairs, but a few hairs will still carry the texture. Nope, I need to re reload my brush. If your paint is not coming off of your brush, Check the viscosity, and then if you're still thin, make sure you reload. And sometimes, if you haven't rinsed your brush recently, you may need to rinse it and then reload. That's pretty good. Alrighty, so let's see here. I want to make more of this fur go into the dark mask. Yeah, rinsing out the brush definitely helped. As paint dries in your brush, even when you're reloading it, it'll still get tacky. It'll create this tacky layer of paint. Um, so, and remember, direction of the fur radiates outward from the nose, so keep that in mind. Technically, for shorter fur, you want to use shorter brush strokes. As you get toward the, the neck of the weasel, you're going to start seeing longer fur, so you use longer brush strokes. Sometimes you can just get away with long brush strokes in general and just overlap them. Depends on how you're feeling. And I want to suggest a little bit of these brush strokes going into the ear with lighter fur. I may need to build up a couple of layers of them for that to really carry. Especially if you're using thin paint, you can definitely get in a situation where you need to build it up in a couple of layers, but you just keep your brush strokes in the direction of the fur 
and that makes a much more realistic effect. And I just need to highlight a little bit around the ears now. There. And again, I'm still using a brush stroke that's in line with the fur. Although it may not matter on ear rims as thin as that. So he's starting to come along, actually. His face is starting to be much more ferrety, I think. Uh... Yeah, weasels are vicious. There was a punk band called Screeching Weasel. Excellent. If not a metal band, a punk band is just as good. All right, we're gonna do the same sort of technique over here. Notice how I'm moving the figure so that I keep my brush hand at a comfortable angle for me as I'm doing these lines. In order to get a really natural thin line, that's very important. If you try to contort your hand and you, you try to move your brush hand around instead of the, uh, the model, um, you're not gonna get short straight strokes like this. It's gonna be harder for your hand to operate. So always try to uh, move the model around so that you can keep a comfortable hand position. Get a lot of little, little brush strokes. Don't wanna to lose too much of my underlying shadow. I wanna keep a little bit of it here and there. A little bit of uh, sharp brush strokes here. Now, all right, that's coming along. That is Weasley. Lid to my wall. I actually never had a lid on my wall palette, Silverthorn. I actually have um, what I use is Saran Wrap. Ta-da! There it is. It's actually protecting my paint from last night, which is a higher up on the palette, which I intend to use later. Um, so I was painting my Creature Caster model last night. <sighs> Let's see here. The ear. Straight, short strokes. I can suggest some of those going down into the ear as well, as well as up into the ear. Sometimes it's hard to telegraph this sort of thing because these, these fine hairs in the ear usually aren't sculpted on to animals. You just kind of have to suggest them that they're there. Do -do -do. See, moving the model, not my brush position. Turning the model upside down so I can try to suggest some hairs moving into the interior of the ear. Oh, and there's a rim there that's sculpted, so that's making it hard. All right, so I won't be able to do that there. I can suggest it on the interior, though. All right, so our weasel face is getting much more weaselly. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, lid is fine. It's not water sealed. Like, it's not it's not a great seal. It'll still keep your paint pretty good, Silverthorn, especially if you, like, you know, put, like, a wet, thin sponge over the top and put the lid on. Uh, Rhonda does that. Um, uh, the lid will keep it for, like, if you have to walk away for an hour, the lid's a good, a good compromise. I would probably still put a little extra water in your paint before walking away. I put a little bit of darker paint over here, and now I have to blend it in with some white brush strokes for white fur. There we are. And I need to finish this fur over here. And I need to put my little whisker lines on. Don't forget the fur at the very end of the cheek there. And I don't put as many white strokes underneath the jaw. I don't build it up um, or under the neck. Is I still want a little texture there, but I don't want to build it up as pure white as I am here. Because there's a shadow there, so. Uh, yeah, plastic wrap for the wind, Jedi Jared. I'm with it. Yeah, you could get 3D prints in color, but it's like, you could just paint them too. <laughs> That's always my thought on there. I'm like, I've gotten a 3D print. I got a, my a, one of my WoW characters done in the little busts that they uh, they put out, and it was 3D printed in color. And all I could think when I got it was, gosh darn it, if it didn't have all this like horrible texture on it, I could actually paint it much better than this. Mm. 
I'm going to put some more fur texture here in the mask and also bring the fur texture a bit out and maybe put the pattern in up here. Having a little bit of overlapping white and black fur is a good idea, especially if you're trying to correct kind of the the shape of the mask of your ferret. If you're like, oh, I think I went too far, you can correct it a bit. And it also still gives it that uh, more realistic. I also, I have a line here, definitely from my earlier mocking in of the mask and putting some black fur down or bl a black and brown fur down is gonna help to interrupt that and make it look more natural. Alrighty, that's doing pretty well actually. Let's see here. Get the fur settled up there. And now I need to do some little little lines. I don't have much room for little whisker lines, but I'm gonna add them right along the creases where the snarl is, because that's easy. You could also just do a dash and then uh, just try to lift up your brush a bit for the dashes. And you just need a little suggestion to suggest just a few little dots. And if it gets uh, a little bit out of line, yeah, I agree. The technology will get better on the 3D printing and, and the color printing for sure, eventually. But I always like to, to paint my own. No matter how good that tech gets, it's not going to be anywhere near as cool as I can make it. Um, or any of you can make it eventually with practice. Just think about how far you'll progress with your painting in 10 years, if you like work at it. And it doesn't take that much work. All right, little, little whisker suggestions, which I think I need to glaze a little bit. They're a little bit too bold. Uh, I think I'll glaze with white just a little bit. And the glazing is gonna get really colored watery, especially with white. You wanna take it way down because it's the highest coverage pigment. So you've gotta make it pretty much just water and then put a thin layer over the top. I'm just gonna paint it right over the top and see if that's thick enough. It may not be. Remember, you don't want it to uh, pool. You just want to paint it over the top to dull down that uh, the black little pinpoints of my whisker lines looks a little better. I could probably get a little stronger with my glaze. One more stroke. Just being very cautious because you can always put another layer of glaze on that has a pool. So I'm going to slurp it off really quick with my brush. Do not want it to pool. There. It's a little better. Makes it integrate a little better. Alrighty. Yeah, I'm gonna hold off on buying like resin printers and stuff, I think, until, uh, cause the longer I wait, the better they're gonna get. <laughs> cause the technology is just racing forward right now. Ah, I forgot my teeth on this side. He's a toothless ferret on one side. We can't have that. It's not good. Let's get my uh, stained ivory out to the other side of the teeth. Yeah, I haven't been collecting STL files because I have no use for them. So I'll let you guys tell me when uh, when printing technology has gotten so good that I have to do it. Uh, until that point, I will resist. Although there is always the point that my, the possibility that my boyfriend may go nuts for it before I do, but we'll see. All right, I need to touch up this side of the mouth, actually. I've got a little bit of a blurf here. There. Much better. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, it is true, right? Technology is just, like, totally going loopy, and every time you turn around, there's a new iteration of a printer that's even finer, you know, can print at even, even finer resolutions. Like, I really want... I'm not going to jump in until a 3D printer comes out where I can just not have to clean any striations off of it. It's just going to be like beautiful and perfect. And that might be out there right now, but it's too, more expensive than I want to pay. So plus, do I really need another hobby? Do I really need to buy STL files in addition to miniatures? 
I don't know. Until most of the model companies, like, decide that it's just, like, cost prohibitive to actually print their own models and they just start selling STL files. Then I'll have to switch to get my, uh, get my fix. When print, 3D printing gets so cheap that that's just the way they decide to roll. There we go. Got a little nose. Got a little nose highlight. No, we lost a nostril. There. We have two nostrils. We have two nostrils and a weasel face and weasel teeth and weasel eyeballs. Um, I do think I want to put just a little bit more of a highlight under that eye and I'm going to use black and brown. And I may suggest that with the fur up here too. Since it's still a little hard to see where his eye resolves. So I can connect these little eyebrows down here with the muzzle fur. And make a little bit of a highlight under the eye so that it comes into focus and you can see it. There we go. Now we can see the eyeball a lot better. So sometimes you can just take artistic license and go, you know what? I know that my reference doesn't do this, but there's bound to be a weasel that's marked like this. So I'm just going to do it just to bring the face out better. Um, now, let's see here. What time is it? Uh, we still have a little time. I'm going to grab this ruddy leather and grab some of my polished leather and throw some white into it and uh, highlight the top of the head a little bit. I think I need more poly more uh, ruddy leather though. It's very red. Red, white, there we go. That's a better color. So I often do like little spot blends on here. So I could be doing this on a wet palette, sure. This is what people typically do on a wet palette. But then I would miss out on having all my paint consistency stay exactly as I need it. Um, so I am more than willing if I need a spot color to just mix it on the palette. And even though it's gonna dry in a little while, uh, I'm not too concerned. I'm just wanting to use it for this particular section right now. And on a wet palette, I'd have the problem of, you know, having to remix it anyway, you know, at least the paint consistency part of it. So I've got a little bit of uh, fur radiation out there. So now his face is coming out a little bit better. So either way, you're going to have to muck with your paint. And it's just really your painting style and uh, how you like to muck with your paint that determines whether you prefer a wet palette or a well palette. But I recommend that people try both. I gave, well, I gave wet palettes a, a solid try a couple times in my life and just determined that for my painting style, the well palette is more suitable. And sometimes I think that a lot of uh, instructors, at least, that I've, that I've seen tend to really present the wet palette is the only smart choice and I don't agree with that. So I think it really depends on what you're trying to do. But then again, I tend to disagree with anybody who says this is the only choice in mini painting because it really should depend on the best results that you get um, and the style that you like and what fits with you. It shouldn't be what other people are telling you is the best way. There we go. And I put a little glaze of regular ruddy leather to get my, my red back. So yay, we have, we have weasel face. Pretty good weasel. I'm pretty happy with this weasel face, actually. All things. He's still got kind of buggy eyes, but then he's a weasel. He can have buggy eyes if he wants. And yeah, he's almost done. Like, there isn't much left. I'll have to do the treatment on the fur over here that I did back here. Um, and then I'll have to get some basing on, basing for him. And if I was being really evil, I'd put some, like, chicken feathers and blood on the ground. But, you know, yeah, no, we won't. He's probably, like, hanging out with hill giants anyway, so they probably have tossed in adventurer bits to eat. He hasn't been raiding chicken coops. Giant chicken. It would have to be dire chicken coops since he's a giant weasel. I don't know if I want uh, to imagine dire chickens. Somebody needs to put that in an adventure now that I've said it, though. There needs to be dire chickens. Dire poultry. Oh, sorry, did I miss a highlighted message, Odd Ducky? Um, 
just, I'm sorry, I'm actually painting a lot and uh, Justin may still be away from the uh, keyboard. Justin, are you back? Yeah, Justin is still gone. So that being the case, oh, thank you, Taz Lynch. I actually haven't pushed my Patreon and I should because for those of you who are watching at the end of last week, um, I was uh, doing uh, Celtic Knot, uh, kind of a kind of a fantasy Celtic Knot freehand on the Frost Giant, um, and uh, I did a PDF for it, and that I put up on my two dollar Patreon slot. So, yeah, sorry, sorry, Ad Ducky, that I missed your highlighted message. Normally, Justin would be here to catch those for me, but since he has been distracted, um, I have not. I've missed it. Uh, they might have done Dire Chickens. I don't know. If so, I'm, I've missed out. But. Uh, Huh. But yeah, so anyway, Patreon, um, Celtic Knotwork, PDF. I put it up a couple days ago and uh, has lots of nice pictures of step-by-step. -step, and I also did the design on a little piece of paper step-by-step uh, -step, so that you could see it very clearly out of context, um, which hopefully will make it a little easier for you to do. So yeah, and uh, I'm going to do, I've just, what did I just get excited about? There was something I was going to do. Oh yeah, I was going to do a color theory one for $5 level soon. So I'm kind of uh, thinking I need to do like different types of color schemes. So I'm going to play with that. By the way, and I've, uh, I've been back for a while, but I was on the phone with both Dave and, uh, and, uh, Col Oh, Dave and Collins. Did they, did they have any contributions? Oh no, it was just normal running stuff. It was, it was just. Oh, okay. Decision stuff. Oh, okay. I just didn't know if we were still doing stream from home this afternoon or if they had anything oh, to yeah, say about that. No, 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 that's fine. Oh, okay, cool. Excelente. Good deal. Just So I will be streaming from home on Ed's show, and we're going to play with some terrain people, some Reaper terrain. I guess I'm, I'm, just, I'm using this mixture of uh, ruddy leather with a bit of white to uh, suggest some fur, again, coming down onto the sides of the weasel. And I can also kind of overlap that with this lighter fur up here if I want. This weasel's like coming along really fast. I'm really happy with him. But yes, I missed a highlighted message earlier, Justin. That's why I was like, I was like, oh no. So if Odd Duck does that again, um, we'll look. Everything works in theory, Tesla Lynch. We should all go there. Could you scroll up, Justin, and, and find, um, was it Odd Duck, I think, had done a highlighted message with a question in it? Yeah, let me see. Now that you're here and not distracted by work people. Uh, odd ducky, is that your? Yeah, word? that's it, huh? All yep. they said was, uh, "He's so angry." I love it. Oh, I'm okay, cool, 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 cool. Awesome. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't a like a question that I had missed. No problem. Super. Yeah, because I've been painting more than I. I normally I look up a lot more often, but today I've been uh, weaseling. Because I'm actually in the in the zone with weasel, and uh, liking it. So. Zone. There we are. More highlighty fur. Oh, and I'm it's having a little problem coming off the brush, so that means I need a little more water in it. So the more water you have in the now, remember when you do thin your paint, you also need to unload your brush a lot, because um, having a lot of paint on your brush after you put a bunch of water in it is going to make it flow all over the place. So not only when you want to do really thin lines do you need to thin your paint more, but you must then wipe your uh, your paint off your brush more otherwise you will have some accidents so what i do typically is just wipe it off on the edge of the palette or i'll test it on my fingernail to see if i can do really fine little lines and if i can then i'm good but if i see puddles then i know i'm not good hello little paws weasel paws i'll probably do the weasel paws more work because i think i need to make them darker all right well weasel is looking okay so i think we're pretty much Getting good. I did want to. I figured uh, I missed a spot yesterday, so I wanted to get that. 
There we go. There we are. Excellent day. So I figured this afternoon I'll probably do some putty work. I've got some reaper skeletons to cut up to use as additional basing because I always like to, I'm sure there's parts. Plus uh, the temple I got is partially broken. So I'm going to uh, work with that. So yay. We'll talk about converting your terrain a bit. And then uh, I guess I could also work on, I could paint part of it. because I want to talk about stone colors too and how to get more interesting stone colors when you're painting something that is rocks. Hmm. So you want to use brusher, longer brush strokes for the tail because uh, this is supposed to be a very bushy tail and it's, unfortunately you cannot sculpt a bushy tail very easily, at least not in this putty style. So um, you have to suggest that the hairs are longer with your brushwork. And I do want to get some red in there. Remember not to just remember to mix in your various colors so that your weasel has consistent colors. There, Mr. Weasel is coming along. Uh, I think I'm going to work on, I've got this temple piece. Do I have it sitting close to me? Let me check. Oh no, did I leave it at Reaper? Uh oh, I might have to run into work. Eek! I thought it was in my bag and I was wrong. I will have to run into work. Well, it's good that I checked now. Otherwise it would have been like, oh no, there's no terrain after all. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a temple base, a ruined temple base. Uh, it's fairly large. It's got co broken columns on it. And I think there's a central statue or column that, uh, and the one that I stole from Justin's pile of stuff had broken off. So that was why I figured it was fair game for me to grab. So yeah, I will run into work then. Even though it seems like a drive there and back, but yeah, it's a reaper piece. Now my yard is extremely sodden right now, Iffy, so that won't work. Um, we've been getting a ton of rain around here. And so any terrain coming from my yard would just be full of water. Plus I don't have proper trees. I just have crepe myrtles. So they're not very good with pieces of bark or anything to use. Unlike all the stuff that apparently Colorado is the terrain state since uh, Michael Proctor just goes out biking and picks up random pieces of bark that are perfect for miniatures. We are all jealous of him. I went hiking with David when we were out, uh, gosh, one of the times I was out in his area and uh, we did find some good twisted roots that worked really well for tree limbs. So probably just need to hike a little more. Probably depends on the season too. There we go. Got some weasel tail going on. It's almost done, guys. Weasel's almost done. Yeah, like in, I do have some moss and stuff. This is true. Alrighty. I'm going to say then, yeah, I've got about three hours. I can go into work for an hour or two and then come home and do the stream. So that makes sense to me. Uh, Alright, guys. Um, we have ferret face. We have, we have ferret side. We have part of ferret other side. He's almost done. Quite a, not a bad uh, piece of time for what, maybe two hours? So I probably will spend another hour on him, just making the fur even more, you know, look even better, um, doing his feet and then doing the basing. I'll probably, he'll probably be a three to four hour model when I'm all done because I also have to putty um, some basing on here since I put him on a bigger round because uh, he fits. I tend to put metal models on plastic bases uh, and then use green stuff to cover this gap and model the terrain a little bit better. Um, I may put some bones or a skull on his base because that could be fun. Uh, the belly I'm going to leave mostly 
Maldorak. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick it in with this color, this um, this dark beige color that I used for a lot of the other parts of the model. It's technically white, but because it's in shadow, I don't want to bring it up as bright with highlights. So I'll probably bring my white fur, my white hairs, just down just a little bit, just so you can see, so I can see them wherever I see light falling. But otherwise, the underside, especially on a model like this, it's very close to the ground. Um, I would just leave it this color, except where I can see it. If I can see it, then I'm going to put just a little bit of fur texture on it with the white, but just a tiny bit. There would be some reflected light coming up at it from the ground, so it's not bad to put a little bit of texture on, but uh, I don't want to overdo it because it is still in shadow. Yeah, shale is definitely useful, but drilling into it can be really, really difficult painting dog. I, I try to limit my rocks um, just because working with them is more difficult. Often I will pick up a rock piece and then just use it as a model or a texture stamp for a rock that I sculpted um, because sculpting rocks lets me control the size and shape completely. So I am more likely to do that and just base it off of regular rocks. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, there's some good stuff in the Southwest, actually, at Wear. Yeah, and we all got our happy little chat session. We all got to hang out virtually and be safe, which is awesome. Oh, Agate, I love Agate. Here, I'm going to pop back to face cam. You guys, hold on. All right, here we are. We have a raid lined up for us. Oh, now. do you? All right, well, thank you for watching me paint the weasel, everybody. You are a fantastic audience, and I will run to work and pick up my terrain piece for this afternoon, um, which I'm looking forward to, so this should be good. Um, I'm going to do some putty work and some paint work, and it should be fun. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> well, we're all, most of us are introverts anyway, so I guess it works, but we still miss each other. Humans are still social creatures. I mean, introvert just means that we don't, you know, we can spend time alone a little bit easier. Um, but yes. Oh, no marbles. Oh, we should do marbles uh, this afternoon. Yes, we will be doing marbles this. Uh, uh, actually, you'd have to do it on your end, Miss Anne. Oh, ooh, yeah, and I don't know how to do marbles, so I guess not I, today. I can, help. I can help you with it. It's not too hard, but it's up to you, really. I don't know. Yeah. We'll talk about it. Indeedy. All right, guys, stay awesome. Run over and totally. Who are we rating, Justin? We we're rating Zambies. Oh, Zambies. And uh, jump on Zambies and give them lots of miniatures love and make them feel less lonely, okay? Okay. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you later. See you guys later.